when Antiochus III or Antiochus the Great restored control of Palestine to uh, the Seleucid Empire and took it away from the Ptolemaic Empire, life probably didn't change a whole lot for your average Jew practicing uh, there in Palestine. Um, however, when his grandson, Antiochus IV Epiphanes, got on the throne, uh, he decided that, that he was going to make a name for himself. Well, of course, when your grandfather was the great, it's kind of hard to, where do you go from there? You know, the greater, the even better, that doesn't work. Uh, he gave himself a nickname, which you really shouldn't do, because that's just not cool. Uh, but he does, he gives himself the nickname Epiphanes. Uh, so he decided when your grandfather's the great, the best way to go is to call yourself Antiochus IV God Manifest, um, which is just a great, uh, great measure of humility. Uh, at any rate, uh, the Jews like to call him Epimenes uh, because that means the insane uh, for the way in which he practiced. He had tried to advance further down into Egypt where the Ptolemies controlled, um, but the Romans interceded and told him he couldn't do that. Uh, so he goes back to Palestine probably feeling a massive inferiority complex and decides to take it out on the Jews. Uh, he levies high taxes. Uh, he auctioned off the position of high priest. Uh, the winner was a man named Jason. Uh, you don't get much more Greek than the name Jason, so we're going to possibly even assume he wasn't even a Greek, or excuse me, a Jew who ended up being high priest. Um, he wanted to, to set about to Hellenize uh, the, the Jews, to make them Greek. Uh, so in 167, uh, he sacrificed a pig to Zeus on the altar in the temple in Jerusalem. I don't know if you can make the temple more profane than that. That may be the limits of just how profane you can make the temple at that point. Uh, he forbid circumcision, uh, he forbid the keeping of scriptures, he prohibited, prohibited Sabbath observance, he prohibited the observance of any other religious feasts, uh, all of these things to take this backwards practicing primitive people and, and make them enlightened Greeks. Um, to that end, he had representatives go to the town of Modin uh, and there find an aged and devout priest named Mattathias. And Mattathias was asked to sacrifice a pig on the altar to Zeus there at a local shrine. Mattathias refused. So I suppose they found the next most devout and aged priest and asked him to do it. Um, he agreed, but before he could, uh, Mattathias killed him, killed the representative of Antiochus, and fled up into the hills with the faithful. Uh, he gave them an encouraging and rousing speech uh, to try and, and encourage them, but uh, um, after that speech he died. It would have been a big day, I guess, and just the emotional stress of it was too much for him. Um, the faithful ones are the chassidim, uh, the, the pious ones, the ones who are willing to, to follow and commit. Uh, and they were led by Mattathias's middle child, of, middle child of five, uh, Judas. Uh, Judas earned his nick nickname. He was Judas the Maccabee, uh, Judas the Hammer. Uh, you got to be pretty cool to end up, I think, with the nickname, be given the nickname Hammer. It's probably easier to give yourself the nickname Hammer, but to earn it, well, that's, a, that's pretty impressive. But he led this guerrilla war against uh, Antiochus. Uh, they had their, their setbacks, they had their miraculous deliverances, um, but finally uh, they were able to take the, the temple back in Jerusalem. Uh, they were able to rededicate and cleanse the temple, uh, which gives us the Festival of Lights, uh, that gives us Hanukkah, uh, which is the only, New excuse me, the only holiday that is observed in the New Testament whose origins are not in the Old Testament. Uh, the origins are told in the book of Maccabees, 1st Maccabees, um, which is not canon for Protestants and also not canon uh, for Jews. Uh, it is, however, canon for Catholics. Uh, so the individuals for whom the story of the origins of Hanukkah is sacred scripture are Catholics. Um, obviously, Jews believe in the story, know the story, but they don't consider the book scripture. Um, just one of those crazy things about life. I have no other explanation for it other than history is weird. Uh, at any rate, um, the, uh, it's usually celebrated in December every year. So they're cleansing the temple, rededicating the temple. They didn't know what to do with the altar. Remember the altar, it had a pig sacrificed on it. And you know, how much OxyClean does it take to, to rededicate the altar? They thought it best to tear it down uh, and store the stones in a place um, and build a new one. But what's interesting in Maccabees is it says they wanted to store them until a prophet could come along to tell them what to do. There's a recognition by the mid second century BC that we don't have prophets anymore. Uh, the, the prophets have fallen silent, and so we don't know uh, what's going to happen, when they're going to come along, or, or how long until we can get a word from the Lord again. Of course, as Christians, we believe that word of the Lord came just a, a couple hundred years later. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything for you.